All right. Wow. Finally. Okay. Here we are. I gutted my other machine. Jeez, uh, I forgot the name of the company that makes it. I'll tell you, tell you after. Anyways, here we are. I'm going to be putting everything in the uh, Lian Lee O11D Evo, the new version that they just came out with. First step's going to be putting in the power supply, obviously. Uh, the second step will probably be putting in the motherboard and then mounting the CPU cooler. And then from there, I'm going to have to do a little bit of cutting and draining on the GPU to put those adapters on. Yeah, these things. The drip proof. Well, I, I tested it out. Actually, you get maybe one or two drops of water come out of them. So, again, if you use those while and you open them up while you're working on your system, I would definitely recommend paper towels or um, even a towel or something under there to be able to catch that water. You really don't want water and electronics, we all know, just doesn't mix well there. So, power supply, Fantech, Revolt. This power supply will operate two separate motherboards with no problem whatsoever. That's, that's what it was designed for. It was made for the other case that I had was supposed to be able to put a mini ITX in there. I didn't like it. It was just way too much heat, way too, too much, too packed. I think they would need a little bit bigger of a case to be able to utilize that case to its full potential. Anyways, first step, power supply. And I guess I could give it a little bit of a cleaning. It's pretty clean, actually. Doesn't look like there's any dust inside. This, this um, power supply does have a hybrid mode, so you can basically, it's a silent mode, is what they call it. It has, from the looks of it, a 140 millimeter fan. It's a Fantech fan inside of it. It's a great, it's probably one of the best made power supplies that there is. I, um, who makes the insides for this? It is, I'm sorry, it's a 1200 watt, not 13. And it's pretty much got the best components you can get in it. It's all Seasonic, the whole thing. All right, so the way this is going to go in is obviously it's got to go in this way. And I guess it doesn't get much simpler than that. Let me show you something real quick on this. You can see in the back it has two separate places where you can put the 24 pin cabling. It has lots of, oh, and another great thing about this is your PCIe and your CPU one, two, and three, and four, whatever they got in here, they, 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 they can all be multi-integrated. It's not like most power supplies where you can't mix. As long as you're using the Fantech cables, you, you can use the CPU one, for a PCIe, it, it, it doesn't matter whatsoever. All right, okay, so we're gonna put it in. Actually, now that I look at it, we're gonna put it in. So the cool air, from the looks of it, it spins clockwise, which means it's gonna pull cool air in, blow warm air out the front, or the back. Next step, we'll be cabling. As you can see, everything's pretty heavy duty cabling on this stuff. So I'm going to get that set up. And when I've got the cabling in, because it's such a long process getting that at least halfway decent, we'll be back to look at the cable management and the rest of the install. Okay, due to the time constraint I'm kind of on, with it being a Sunday and everything, I decided to go for, go for, mm -hmm. for go the, uh, whole installation of the motherboard and putting the radio on top because y'all seen that 
the radiator was still attached to the motherboard and the CPU block so I just pulled it aside and then placed it back on and wow th this is just like incredible this case it's it's so roomy I mean just just the amount of room up top and down the bottom how they left everything open it's just incredible. What I am going to do is with a simple push of the lever, take this off. And I am going to mount the 60 millimeter radiator right here. Now it's possible. It goes all the way out and gives me around, I'd say a, a little over a quarter of an inch away from the back of the case, which is very well ventilated. Basically the whole back panel is, it, it's perforated and it, it's just, it's made to breathe. So I've got to get that going and we'll get on to doing part of that installation next. The only thing that I'm going to put is it does come with a little bracket that you can it comes out with a GPU can go on which was pretty cool. A lot of companies are starting to do that now. It's a very, really I know the Torrent has it. I don't know if the Corsair case has it. D5000 I think has it or 5000D. So yeah, it's a nice little feature. And it's well needed with these big um, with, with these big GPUs. It's it's well needed. All right, so we'll get on to the next step. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, I put the Cooler Master SF three hundred and sixty up top. Fit like a glove. Like I said, I just don't know why more people don't use these things. They are just so convenient one RGB cable, one power cable, good to go. Um, next thing I'm going to do is start pulling some cables through. Looking at, I love these new, um, these new Asia Hoss, these cable separators, cable ties, cable, cable pins, whatever people call them, only different names. They, I just like the flat look to them, says Asia Hoss on it. And they, kind of picking it up a little bit so seeing I've already got it pre-made clip it right in all that is just phew, wow it doesn't get better than that that is perfect it's always easy to pre-make these, put them together outside before you put them in. Okay, so I had a little dilemma, nothing big. I was deciding on whether I should use the Asia Hoss 3-in-1 the 360 millimeter argo with a cooler master on the bottom it's not using a radiator to put it on it's pretty easy just take off that screw right there pull the plate out screw it on done but I ended up because of the side having a strip of RGB in the front has a, a, a nice strip what I'm planning on doing and instead of using any of the programs that come with every different piece of equipment here, I'm just going to use the MSI program to go, uh, uh, if Lee and Lee has something, but I'm going to go off the motherboard. So it's going to be just one RGB. Everything's going to be connected to the motherboard. This way everything will be uniform. The last time I had it was kind of a little mixed mess. A few different ones set up. It was hard to tell the difference, but... Still could, so that's what I'm gonna do. I, I, that's in, that's in, that one's in back there. Well, it's gonna be in back there. I'm working on it right now, getting the. I have to cut the hoses on the water block for the uh, GPU. 
and I've got one cooler master fan that I'm going to put back here that's an RGB so everything other than this is going to be cooler master and I think it's coming along pretty good okay so I hope I'm not getting too much noise feeding back from these ceiling fans but it's like 70 something today I didn't put my air conditioner in yet in post-production I will try to eliminate as much as that as possible but here we are right now 60 millimeters in as you can see I've got plenty of room to put another fan in there unlike the other one but what I'm gonna have to do from the looks of it is the cape the hosing is going to run out and in out and in so I'm going to place yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the fan on and I think what I'm gonna do seeing that it's going through radiators it's a little bit of a restriction so I can get away with it as far as it not being like full blast air going straight through fans and then to the mesh so as I said this is probably pretty easy slide this up push this out this goes here And this is, I think, the way I want to run that. Okay, in order to get the cooling measured out exactly the way I wanted, I picked up a small bracket and some double-sided Velcro, which is going to attach to the pump. Now in the future I'm probably going to put, this is going to come out and I'm probably going to end up putting a big distribution plate in the front here, a distro plate, whatever they call it, disc go plate. Um, this way I can have a better idea on the flow, what the flow is going to look like, but it shouldn't be much of a, a problem if I was keeping track of temperatures because I'm going to mount a digital temperature gauge inside of here. I, whether I mount it here or I mount it somewhere, it's gonna be somewhere where it's easy to see. It'll probably be mounted to the side of the, um, of the pump. The pump is a little bit smaller. It's not smaller as in power, it, it, from what it, it can still it, it's still 2600 rpms it's just it's just narrower than the other pump that I had it's it's already pre-filled you can see by the um, hoses already have the adapters on it so I'm gonna give that a shot see how that works out it actually came with this velcro stuff instead of using screws I could it has holes on the bottom if I wanted to put some screws. Or is it in the sides? Oh, in the sides you can mount stuff. So, easy fix, no big deal. Velcro works just fine. And it's actually very easy to get on and off. So, if I have to do some repairs, some work, or swap anything out. So right now, I'm just gonna work on getting these hoses all measured out. And then we'll be back and hopefully I can get this thing up and going. Okay, so where are we now? Got the hosing done. Top tied in, no problem. I really didn't have to mess with that. I have the brackets on the side. I already ran a pressure test. I put this bracket down here with the Velcro on it. I can get that all into place eventually as I go along. I gotta put a little spacer between this and this. I managed to notch out, okay, over at this. I just, I'm just installing the, the uh, digital temperature reading mechanism, whatever you wanna call it. Strange thing is, is what I don't understand is it's 2022 and they're still using these, these bloody things, seriously? Well, okay, 
I, I would have preferred SATA, but it is what it is. And I, I, you know, I have every type of cable there is with with it, so that'll work out just fine. I'm gonna get this leveled out. I've been running the pump. I stopped right now, but I have a USB power cable that runs directly to the pump. Actually, I can start it back up. And there it goes. Let's see if you can hear it. Might hear a couple air bubbles. I think I pretty much got everything out of it. So I'm going to finish wrapping that up. Hopefully get this thing up and going tonight. And I just got in my new monitor over there. It's uh, MSI 27 inch flat screen 4K 60 billion color thing. And oh, another thing that I got that I'm really excited about. I picked this up. It's made by Data Color. It's called the Spider X Pro. This is for color correction of your monitor. You basically take it after the program's installed. I'll be right with you in a second there, bud. So this is all out. After it's been warmed up for an hour or so, this does separate. This, this piece goes on the back, this goes on the front. You run your program, you gotta set everything to default on your monitor. This goes in the dead center, it actually gives you a little outline of where it should lie. Tilt your monitor up a bit so it lays flat. I don't think it'll work on a curved screen because it has to be flat against the screen. And then you press your button and let it do a color correction and it will bring it right to probably as close as anything can ever get it to the perfect settings hopefully it does work all right so i'm going to start working a little bit more on this stuff and uh be back when i get to the next step Whew, what a day okay for the most part everything's pretty much done the pumps in all the air's bled out of it all the quick release valves are in. I just got a little bit of tidying up to do with some cable management. Okay, I'd have to say another mission complete. It's been running for about 20 minutes. We're at 26.9. I have to say that's pretty damn cool. Obviously I got some cable management to do. All right, here we are, finished product. It's looking pretty good. The only thing I did was move the pump, put it on the side. I still, like I said, I haven't really done much for the cable management, but all in all, just trying to get the rest of this stuff squared away. I'm pretty happy with it. I got this new MSI monitor. This thing is sick. I can't believe the color difference. <sighs> wow. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video, folks. It was fun as always. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up or even subscribe. I hope some of this was helpful. Everybody, peace out.